Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mia, and I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This week is episode number 228 of the show. Um, getting close to 230 at this point. Uh, I have three new Lit RPG reviews for you folks to enjoy today, and that's going to include Voice of Luck, Luck Lux Voice, book number one. Poor Cultivation, The Slayers of Heavens, book number one, a lit, lit RPG Wuxia series. And Animal Eye, a game lit adventure, Animal Instincts, book number one. But before we go into any of those, we're of course going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Lunar PG News, we just got one brief little story. Um, some little bit of authors played a D&D game recently and recorded it for you to enjoy. They actually streamed it live on Facebook, and so they, could, they took comments um, and answered questions of, of readers um, and watchers uh, of the program. And the people who were actually doing the D&D campaign are going to be Phoenix Ray, BF Rock River, uh, Matthew Barbler, and RK Blue. So um, some very... Well, on Little Beach Authors, um, so go check it out. We have a link in the show notes for the YouTube um, the video of that particular um, D&D game. Um, also, in things that have come out now, I haven't had a chance to read them, but they're out for you to enjoy as of this recording. And that includes Earthdom, a post-apocalyptic liturgy. That's the third book in the Ether Collapse series. Also, the sixth book in the... Dragon Heart series is out for you to enjoy. Also, Death Mantle book number three. Uh, uh, Critical Failures book number eight. That's right. This series has eight novels, and I've actually enjoyed most of them. I haven't finished them all, which is why I can't say I'm through them all. Um, but this is an absolute hilarious, um, <laughs> um, inappropriate NSF um, kind of novel. And they're usually audiobooks for all these things eventually, so go get it. Uh, also out right now, Enjoy is Dawn Adventure, Pride and Prejudice, uh, part one, the part of the Resurrection Master of the Liberty Series World. That is a mouthful. Um, and according to the novel description, this is supposed to be a, a Pride and Prejudice for a lit RPG adventure in a set in a fantasy world. So there you go. It's, it's, uh, also out now is Tower Powers book number five. Um, and the story of Dungeon Core Academy, book number five. This actually might not recognize the artwork, uh, according because the author generally has the same cover art, just uh, color differently. And this one definitely breaks that trend. Um, so Alex Crest is is changing up that artwork here for a Dungeon Core Academy, book number five, a fistful of monsters. Um, and also out for you to enjoy is Somnia Online, books number one through three. As an omnibus, so a lot of people who enjoy the series, you can actually get the first three books now. As an omnibus, that's um, golly geez, I think it's probably almost a thousand pages of, of entertainment for one Kindle Unlimited purchase or, or read. So there you go, good stuff for you. Um, in new liturgy audiobooks, I actually have quite a few out for you to enjoy. Uh, Pen Draken, with the rules, book number two. Also from Aaron Oster, Stormforge, book number five, which has arrived on since book number five. Um, the third book in the Underdog series, The Dark Continent, is out as an audiobook, as is the Tower of Power series, book number four, uh, The Great Raid, and Apollo Thorns Underground, book number five, oh, sorry, four, don't, don't get mad at me, folks, um, book number four is out as an audiobook, I, I enjoyed it immensely, so check that out, um, as is The World's Hardest Farmer, um, and The Last Time Luke. Time Loop, Max of the Rebellion, Volume 2, which is a very interesting story about um, kind of a Groundhog Day-ish um, t- time <laughs> um, jumping system. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's, it's on Send the Future, sci-fi stuff, RPG progression, uh, mild stuff, uh, Russian relation. So there you go. Uh, in upcoming Liturgy, there's stuff where I read out book titles so they're coming in the near future for you to plan your reading schedule by uh that includes glory of the formation empire book number four out on may 31st um outworld awakening uh, out on june 2nd uh fugitivity the fairy's tale book number two out on june the third uh the good guys book number nine out on june the fourth uh june the ninth is going to be the sixth book in the reality bender series uh on june the 10th this is in the list it'll be uh anora rising book number two frog of war on June the 12th, the sixth book in the Rise of Omniscient series. On June the 13th, the System Multiverse. On June the 14th, Glitch World. June the 15th, it'll be the Alchemist book number two. I actually really enjoyed book number one in the series, so I'm looking forward to reading book number two. Um, June the 16th, it'll be God Mode, the Liberty Saga. 
Um, June 26th, Summer Friction, Space Seasons, book number three. June the 30th, Skyrim's Online, book number four. June 30th, it'll be Cat and His Human, League of the Losers, book number one. June 30th as well, The God Game, God's Game, book number, sorry, volume number three. Uh, July the 1st, the ninth book in the System Apocalypse series by Tao Wong. July the 8th, it'll be The Project Stellar, book number two. On July the 9th, it'll be Legends Online, book number six. July the 14th, it'll be Life in Exile, book number two. July the 28th, it'll be Eternal Online, book number two. July 31st, book one, um, sorry, Arrow of Justice. It'll be August the 8th, War of the Posers, the Bad Guys, book number four. And last but not least, August the 8th, no, no, not last. August the 18th, it'll be Alien Selectium. And last, August 27th, The Small Unit Tactics, volume one, which is another uh, Russian translation. So there we go. All the stuff announced coming in the near future. On to new releases and reviews. And first up this week is going to be Voice of Luck, Lux Voice Book Number One, written by Daniel Schienhoven. Uh, this is a about 400 pages as of this recording. Amazon still isn't showing the pay, actual page count. Um, it is $4.99, available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, it is... Here's the author description. John, Doc Henry, has been on the shortest, crappiest end of the stick since the first day of his life. No parents, bad foster parents, and an abysmal luck at every turn. The day his life changed started out exactly like he'd come to expect. His car died on a rarely traveled road, and he broke his toe shortly after dodging the one other car on the road. When it stopped and backed up to him, the license plate read, Lady Luck, adding insult to injury. Now, he has a new name, a new life, and a purpose. The odds are still stacked against him, but with... The newly named Doc Holiday has luck herself on his side. With newfound confidence, he's ready to face the strange new world he has been sent to, a world similar to the Wild West, but with magic and supernatural creatures. And there's a content warning saying that this can contain adult situations, including sex, gambling, uh, beast, drug use, harm, and murder, so, and graphic texting, so be aware. Um, this is actually a story that's doing amazingly well. Um, I think it's as of this recording, like top 300 on all of Amazon. So congratulations to the author. Um, it's a slice life story with a very light RPG elements where the main character is transported to a fantasy old West setting. The main character chooses his race and some nice game perk abilities in a character creation scenario before he's sent to this new world. The MC, the main character is easy to root for and he uses his newfound luck to carve out a place for himself in town and the town he starts out in. The world bidding in the stories and well, and I recognize many elements from old West movies, gambling and realistic Alice from cultures and fantasy races vying for resources. But I actually think that's one of the better elements of the story. Um, it's just like the nice, um, mixing of like this old West setting with, um, kind of light RPG mechanics, but also like these mechanics being part of the game world or the, the world itself. Um, everybody recognizes them, of course. Um, and it's just kind of a nice, combination of, of, of things it, it, it felt different just because not a lot of um stories have an old west setting so it, it was fun there uh, lots of guns and shootouts and lots of gambling on the game mechanic side of things um they're kind of light i'd say this isn't so much liturgy as, as it is game like just because there's not a ton of progression there is there is a there is a little bit um um, and most of the number portions, so if you're into crunchy stories, this isn't one of them, um, it happens at the beginning of the story um, with the character creation. Uh, the main character does have special abilities that he's used fairly regularly, and when he eventually does progression power via faith points, he gets to choose new powers that he uses in the story. But again, that's not, that's definitely not the, the main focus of the story. So the main focus of the story is really revolving around the main character, who's who's now suddenly a heck of a lot more likely than he was in our world, being transported to this world, and finding um, friends and companions and kind of um, making the world a better place through using his luck and gambling and helping other people. And it's kind of a fun little community building kind of story. And again, it's in the Old West, so there's action and guns and magical guns and abilities and powers and villains. Um, so there's, there's good action and adventure kind of things here. Um, but the game stuff is definitely the, like the RPG game stuff is not like the biggest focus. Um, there are other game elements, but they're related to actually real gambling games in the story. I thought that was really well done in, in introducing those concepts to this fantasy world. Um, so good stuff. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, be aware though, there is 
there are graphic elements. There are adult elements in the story, including graphic sex scenes. They are skippable. I, I'm, it's not my kind of thing, but they're very skippable. The author is very nice to like have little dashes saying, "Oh, we're going to be, we're we're separating this little section. There's a little cue that this is going to be getting sexy time, and then the dashes afterwards, so you can skip all over it, and it doesn't change the story. Um, it does reflect the intimacy." Uh, on an emotional and, and community level, that's happening with the main character and 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 some of the characters though. Um, overall, it's an entertaining read. And while I personally would have loved to have seen more full fledged RP not- uh, game notifications, you know I, I, that's, that's the things I like. Um, it was still a very interesting story that I had a good time with, um, and I appreciated kind of the change of setting to the old one. So for me, it's score seven point five out of ten. That's Voice of Luck, Lux Voice Book Number One. Uh, very enjoyable story with a score of a seven point five out of ten. Okay, next up is going to be Poor Cultivation, The Slayer of Heaven, book number one, a lit RPG Wuxia series written by Alan Bard. Uh, this is 315 pages, $3.99, so it is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. A top secret game for training superheroes, hostile locals, and unfortunate kids fighting each other to get power and save their skins. A man willing to master his new force by drawing the power of his inner demons. When it entered the top secret project lost his consciousness was sent to the combat neural network awakening the hidden powers of his body and mind now it's up to him to decide whether he's following the path of martial arts or focusing on achieving something bigger whether he'll choose to be a lone wolf or join his new friends on an island hidden from the world players are given access to a system that allows them to learn the ways of the force they're engaging in engaged in mortal combat but Nick is the only one in possession of a unique artifact with a very strange name, Cultivator. Will the artifact help him win and get off the island? What secrets does this mysterious place hold? So there you go. Um, full disclosure, I received a man's copy for free. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, I should first say this is a uh, Russian translation story. And it's actually, it was a collaboration between several Russian authors, um, of whom I've been asked not to name. Um, but you can kind of tell that there are different um, minds uh, involved in creation of the story. And sometimes that's really good. You get a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different um, experienced people um, making the story better. And I don't know that that was the case this time in this particular story, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the story felt random, like there were sometimes conflicting personalities um, taking saps of the story. Um, and may- maybe that is due to uh, the particular translation of this particular novel um, or editing, or maybe there's just a, a, a thematic difference between um, what um, was enjoyable for me as, as opposed to what was in the original language. But the story... Um, was not particularly enjoyable. It wasn't like terrible. It was just wasn't particularly entertaining. Um, the story is supposed to be a battle royale lit RPG story with cultivation or wuxia elements, right? Um, and while there are dark battle royale elements, absolutely, um, those are definitely there. People die left and right, and so the authors are willing that are not I don't want to murder people or kill them, kill them off. Um, the RPG elements are less frequently seen, and I'm not really sure if it's actually a Wuxia cultivation story. At least, uh, not as I understand what those 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 genres are. But again, I freely admit I don't read those type of stories unless they gen- generally you know mix with little RPG for some reason. Um, the good half of the story, I'm sorry, rather a good half of the story, is set up for why the main character is being sent to this battle royale island. And the seemingly random events that happen to the characters in their first days there. Once the story hits the halfway mark, you get some training and some player versus player action as the people on the island fight over resources and special um, special uh, devices, uh, arbitrary like bonuses and things like that. However, r- until like the very very end, um, you don't really get any kind of explanation about why anyone is there, uh, other than the fact that they've agreed to it. Uh, so a lot of the story feels purposeless um and, and in rereading like the novel description i think that's more than you actually get in the story up until like the very end of it so a, a lot of the story just felt random to me and uh, it, was, it just wasn't a pleasant feeling as i was reading the story um because there's the fairly regular action it's decent but again a lot of the points um they just they just weren't explained um and that that just left me with like a um n- 
it eventually made me just not interested in this because I wasn't understanding what was going on and why, and neither were the characters. And so the events that were occur in the story, um, they just just felt random. I was like, okay, what what's why is this happening? Um, and I guess for some readers that might be amazing and great. For me, it was like confusing. Um, so there you go. On the game mechanics side of things, this is definitely a RPG. There's character sheets, stats are increased, classes with particular power sets and items, special powers. This is absolutely what a RPG it is. Um, I'll point out that those elements are a little lighter. You don't seem like a, a, a ton. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about Little BG is understanding the game mechanics to the point where I can kind of make my own character, where I can be like, oh, I love this class. I, I would I would choose it too, or I choose a different class and maybe make my build a little bit different to, to maximize this or that, whatever the case is. If a Little BG story can generally give me that inf- much information about the story and the game mechanics, I, I always see that as a plus because you've created, you've given the reader enough information that they're kind of creating their own stories or characters in their mind, and then, which mean when they're connected to the story, that they understand the rules, and and it and it makes sense to them, right? And that wasn't the case here. Um, it wasn't that there wasn't RPG mechanics or small ones that I didn't understand them enough. There wasn't enough explanation of what they were um, for me to do that to to make my own characters. And 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 frankly, um, sometimes the game rules would just change for no reason whatsoever that I could that I could discern. Um, other than to create like these new obstacles in the story for the character. Um, and, and for me, it was just, it, that was unsatisfying to me. Um, um, on the side of the cultivation workshop, again, I don't really know that that actually exists in the story. Again, at least not as I understand it. Um, and again, I freely admit it's not like my genre, I'm the Liberty Podcast, not the Wuxia Cultivation Podcast. Um, uh, the main character does have a cultivation bracelet, but it kind of just seems to give him access, early access to some game elements. There's no meditation or pulling and refining mana or key from the world or monsters to advance his mind and body elements, none of the other stuff I've seen in other cultivation Wuxia stories. Um, at most, there's a corruption aspect that he uses as a fuel for some special abilities. So... There you go. Um, story-wise, again, there are dark elements, and if you want something dark, this might be for you, I guess. But again, I found it a little confusing. And a lot of the other reviews that I've read for the book kind of had a similar thought process. Like, this was so confusing, I just put it down. I couldn't I couldn't finish it. Um, and those dark elements, which again, are here, that's a different part of the story, they're overshadowed by the k- kind of randomness of the story that things would happen, and there's no explanation of why they happen or what they mean to the story. Um, and, and there's no like real like focus purpose or explanation of why the character should be participating on this, uh, murder island, uh, in the first place. Again, it's like a very, very important, I'm well, why in case you want to read the whole thing, but again, that explanation just doesn't occur, um, for, for, for the me at least. So I was confused as to what was happening, what the rules were. Um, and that just kind of led me to being like uninterested in the events that had happened because like, I don't. <laughs> There's no purpose. Like, what's the point uh, of of these events? And it's not explained well enough in the story for me to understand. Um, and I, another thing is, I just didn't connect with the characters. Like, again, the first little good chunk of the book is setting up the main character, what his purpose is, his background, and why he's being sent to the island. And I did not like the main character. He was he's a criminal. And he, I, and again, that kind of feeds into the dark elements of the story. Um, and there's some attempt at making him empathetic in him getting kind of a raw deal. But I was like, nope, you kind of deserve to go to jail. And and you want to go to the Italian? Hey, that's on you, man. No empathy for me, though. Uh, and so what that ended up doing for me, as far as the characters went, was I didn't care about them if they died. Um, and so I wish I wasn't invested enough to like kind of care. Like, oh, you died? Okay, don't care. Um, and so that, that just added to like, oh, I was kind of bored of the story. So, um, for me, uh, for frankly, for the good part story is either rooting against the character or I was just bored of the story. So for me, the uh, novel gets a score of five out of 10. Um, again, that's not necessarily a negative score. It's just like, yeah, meh, kind of bored of this. Um, that's poor cultivation, the slayer of heaven book. Number one, a Wuxia series with a score of five out of 10. Okay, uh, next is Animal Eye, a game lit adventure, Animal Instincts, book number one, written by Cindy Coop. It is about five, 400 pages, I think, uh, as of the recording. Amazon so has actually <laughs> put up the page count. It is $4.99, though. It is available on Kingdom Limited. Here's the author's description. In Animal Eye, the newest AI-controlled VR RPG from Horizon Systems, Kin May, and Jake sign on as testers for a game that lets them play as animal companions to human NPCs. In a world that seems Renaissance-era, 
With swords and muskets, strange beasts lurk in the wilderness, pressing their attacks harder into civilized lands. Laughing maniacs that can't be killed by ordinary means. Kin Mei as a sassy crow named Ava, and Jake as Nigid, a Nephilim mountain shepherd. Along with their humans, learn of the history of the game, ruled and set up to stop the twisted mastermind behind the attacks. So there you go. That uh, that's that's all true. Um, this is a fairly family friendly little RPG story with gamers playing. With um, a new VR MMO where players can be animals instead of people. The multi-narrative story has one player as a dog uh, with a protector class, another as a crow, and a companion, a bear companion. Um, it's a fairly slice of life story where you follow the characters as they play their animal characters, get quests, and become immersed in the game world, and go on adventures. It's kind of like if the animals from the movie Homeward Bound went on an RPG adventure. Um, on the game mechanics side of things, the characters gain experience points, levels for learning, their appropriate animal behaviors, solving quests like finding an owner, or problem solving in general using their limited animal skills and abilities. There are levels, skills, stats, um, HP, and all the normal stuff. A uh, few things that I thought the um, author did well in, in bringing different game mechanics to the story you don't, you don't see very often. Um, the use of morale um, was a new trait and ability in, in this particular story. Um, and the animals were able to lower or raise their target's morale with growls and other actions. And morale impacts the target's behavior and their ability to fight effectively. Um, animals also have special abilities and notifications that are popped based upon their um, like animal skills. For example, um, the crow um, can mimic um, other voices of other people and characters. Eventually. If she practices the skill long enough, she'll, she gets better and better at actually talking and communicating with people or, 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 or mimicking sounds like you have a whole list of like words you can she can do the dog on the other hand has like enhanced smell senses um and so when he uses them as an as a like game ability we actually get a list of like things that he's smelling so like bacon apples a person is nearby that he knows um so i thought that was like a really well done uh, and it made the story more interesting it kind of definitely gamified what it would be like to play as an animal uh, definitely a plus for me um overall it's a decent read uh, again it's it's fairly size of life um and it is again it's 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 a pretty light tone it's not like super dark or heavy it's not um amazingly action oriented again I, I definitely compared it to um from the movie homeward bound for a reason because that's that's very much a family friendly kind of uh kind of movie right and this is very much a family friendly kind of story that is very casual so it's life they go into adventures they they yes there is a, a story arc um but it is again um fairly family friendly so if you want to uh, it's a decent read if you feel like reading about animal main characters, or if you want something you read with your kids, this is kind of going to feel that niche for you. For me, um, it was kind of on the borderline of like a six and a seven. And the thing that kind of bumped it to a seven for me was definitely the, some of the innovative um, game mechanics. I always appreciate somebody who who's going out of their way to try something new and it kind of works on the story. And it definitely works on the story for these particular animals. I liked the way the author um, gamified and thought about <laughs> how a video game would, would um, express um, the ability to be an animal and their unique senses and uses them well in the story. So that knocks it up to 7.1%. Uh, out of 10 for me. So that's Animal Eye, a game load adventure. Animal Instincts with a score of 7.1 out of 10. Okay, and that's the end of the show, folks. Thank you very much for listening, hanging out with me, and then listening to me talk about the genre that I love, Lord RPG. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, and our website at libertypodcast.com, and we have a bunch of other links for other places you can hang out with authors, uh, Lord RPG authors, and Lord RPG readers, and talk about your, your genre of Lord RPG. Um, and if you want to support the podcast and anybody you perform, you can find out all of the ways to do so at littlerpgpodcast.com slash support. And again, folks, thanks very much for um, hanging out with me until we can Hang on again. Remember to go read some little RPG. And goodbye, everybody.